Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at an energetics exam question. If you'd like updates on further videos, please subscribe. If you have any questions, post in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. It's a year one A-level chemistry question, so the topics that we're going to be looking at are standard enthalpy changes, the definitions of associated chemical equations, and Hess's law. Here's the first part of the question. Read that, pause it, have a go, and resume when you'd like the explanation. Okay, welcome back. So we need to know our definitions, and in this case, the definition for enthalpy of formation. It's the enthalpy change when we form one mole of a substance from its constituent elements in their standard states. So iron-free oxide is going to be made from iron and oxygen. So iron will occur as a solid, oxygen as O2 gas, and iron-free oxide, oxygen will make two minus ions. Iron is in the plus three oxidation state, so there's iron-free oxide on the right-hand side there. Solid, gas, solid. You'll be aware that this is not balanced, and so the equation must be balanced. Two moles of Fe solid and one and a half moles of O2 gas. Here's our next question. If you'd like to read that and pause the video. Welcome back. So now we've got some enthalpy of formation data and we're going to need to construct a Hess cycle. So from our uh, previous question, we know that we've got elements in their standard states. Now I don't need to balance that for the elements in this particular case. It's not going to get us any extra credit. So those elements of iron and oxygen could be used to either make iron oxide and carbon uh, monoxide with delta H1 or delta 1H, or it can be used to make carbon dioxide and iron as delta 2H. I've labelled up the enthalpy changes of delta H, delta 1H and delta 2H. And going back from our definition earlier, I would like you to start considering what you think the enthalpy of formation of Fe solid would be. We will look at that in a second, but start thinking about what the enthalpy of formation of Fe solid would be. I've labelled up delta R, H or, or, or delta H, the enthalpy of reaction going from left to right. So delta R, H or delta H, same thing. Delta 1H and delta 2H can both be thought of in terms of those standard enthalpies of formation. So the enthalpy for the reaction going from left to right is minus 19 kilojoules per mole, as given to us in the question. Delta 1H, if we take a look at the enthalpies of formation, we are forming one mole of iron uh, free oxide, Fe2O3, and three moles of carbon monoxide. So that enthalpy change delta 1H is minus 882 plus three times minus 111. That works out to be minus 1155 kilojoules per mole. So the enthalpy of formation of an element in its standard state is always zero. If we form one mole of iron solid from one mole of iron solid, no chemical bonds have been broken or formed. There is no energy change associated with that. So the enthalpy of formation of an element in its standard state is always zero. So if we let uh, x, our unknown quantity, be the enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide, we can see that delta 2H is equal to three times x, because we formed three moles of carbon dioxide. Delta 2H can also be thought of in terms of delta 1H and delta H, or, or delta RH, um, and that's Hess's law. The enthalpy change of a reaction is independent of the route taken. So delta 2H is the same as delta 1H with the arrow plus delta H. Uh, substituting the numbers in, 3x is equal to minus 1155 plus minus 19. Take care uh, with directed numbers. And if we use those numbers and then solve 4x, we get the entropy of formation of carbon dioxide equal to minus 391 kilojoules per mole. That's a good template for setting your working out. Uh, don't forget to put the units on and don't forget to put the direction of the uh, enthalpy change on as well, so minus 391 kilojoules per mole, essentially. Okay, another enthalpy change question now, and I've already given us the enthalpy of reaction going from left to right at the top. Have a look at that question and press pause. Welcome back. So 
I've already put in the, the first entropy change, the, the nitrogen and the hydrogen coming together to make NH3. We're not actually told what these enthalpies are, but uh, the N2 going to uh, 2 uh, N and the H2 going to 2 H, they're actually uh, probably bond enthalpies. We're breaking nitrogen bonds and hydrogen bonds respectively. Uh, respectively. Um, so if we were to split those things apart into their atoms, the enthalpy of the reaction delta RH is going from left to right. Delta 1H is the enthalpy change when we split the nitrogen and the hydrogen up into the atoms. And the delta 2H is the enthalpy change when we split the ammonia molecules up into atoms. It's sometimes worthwhile to uh, represent these as molecules so that we get an idea of how many of each type of bond is being broken. That's especially useful if you're just starting off. So delta RH is given to us in the question. That's just simply uh, the, the, the top process. Delta 1H and delta 2H are a combination of these nitrogen, hydrogen, uh, and NH bonds. So nitrogen are nitrogen bonds, hydrogen are hydrogen bonds, and nitrogen are hydrogen bonds. So minus 92 is our delta RH. If we let our unknown quantity, our bond enthalpy for NH equal to X, we're going to use that to uh, in, in the construction of what delta 2H is. Delta 1H is the bond enthalpy for nitrogen, which is plus 944, plus three times the hydrogen to hydrogen bond enthalpy. So we can work out what that number is. Um, delta 2H is six times the nitrogen to hydrogen bond enthalpy. So that's our value for X that we need to work out. Using Hess's law, delta 2H, uh, starting from the ammonia going to the atoms, is equal to minus the enthalpy of reaction, minus delta RH going against that arrow, plus delta 1H going with that arrow. So substituting the numbers in, delta 1H is equal to plus 2252 kilojoules per mole. Um, if we rearrange that to find what X is, Take care with negative numbers. We've got minus minus 92, so x should be equal to plus 391 kilojoules per mole. I would recommend strongly that you put in the positive sign. Um, as you were putting the negative sign, it was exothermic. Put in the positive sign, it's endothermic. And always remember that if we're breaking a bond apart, that's always going to be an endothermic process. So if you're looking for the bond enthalpy for NH and you you get a negative number. Uh, it's time to start reviewing your working out there. Okay. Okay, so the final part of this question is a reason why the bond enthalpy that we calculate in C could be different from the mean enthalpy quoted in data books. The any bond enthalpy is an average of that type of bond in different molecules. So NH in an amine or NH in ammonia could be slightly different environments, could be slightly different energies. So the reason why our value is different is because the data book value is an average value for NH bonds taken across a range of different compounds, whereas here we've, we've, we, you know, we've only worked out for what it is in ammonia, so it, it, it could be different. So the NH bond enthalpy data book value is the average bond enthalpy for NH in different substances, not just ammonia. That's the end of this question. Please feel free to comment if you've got any further questions or if you'd, indeed you'd like to request any questions, uh, I'll, I'll be happy to do my best to go through those. Thank you very much.